In this video, we will cover completing the FIPS 199 worksheet, which will lead to helping you categorize the information system. Categorizing the information system based on the information it will process is task 1-1 of the RMF, and it's categorizing the information system and documenting the results of the security categorization in the security plan. The primary responsibility for this task is the information system owner or the information owner or steward. Supporting roles for this are the risk executive function, the authorizing official or the authorizing official's designated representative, the chief information officer, the senior information security officer, and the information system security officer. This task takes place in the system development lifecycle initiation or the uh, concept requirements definition. There is a lot of information covered in the supplemental guidance for this task, but it's important to understand that categorization will ensure that individual information systems are categorized based on the mission and business objectives of the organization, and that the security categorization process influences the selection of the appropriate security controls and minimum assurance requirements for the system. You can separately ca categorize each subsystem and that won't change the overall categorization of the information system. And to do this you can either separate the systems into individual components or bundle smaller subsystems into larger subsystems within the overall information system and categorize each of the aggregated um, subsystems and then allocate the security controls to the subsystems as appropriate. So basically you can you know, break the system out into subcomponents and assign those controls to the components as they're needed as long as they're all covered within the information system. Uh, this should all be documented in the um, system identification section of the security plan or the SSP or you can actually attach it to the security plan as an attachment. The additional information for this task is basically the references, which are FIPS Publication 199, which we'll cover shortly, uh, NIST Special Publication 830, 839, 859, 860, and CNSS Instruction 1253. FIPS 199 is the Standards for Security Categorization of Federal Information and Information Systems. FIPS itself stands for Federal Information Processing Standards. That's the uh, acronym FIPS. And it requires uh, federal agencies to assess their information systems in each of the categories of confidentiality, integrity, and availability, or what we call the CIA triad. Um, this task is really facilitated with the FIPS 199 worksheet that's available on uh, cyberrecon.com. NIST Special Publication 800-60 is the guide for mapping the types of information and information systems to security categories. It defines a CIA profile for each of the listed information types or in other words, uh, for confidentiality, integrity, and availability, it will assign either high, moderate, or low as a baseline for each of those. For this, we'll use an example of uh, system development as it's listed in the uh, Information and Technology Management Group. This is the breakout of the information for the system development information type as it's defined in 800-60. The system development supports all activities associated uh, with in-house design and development of software applications. The rep recommended security categorization for the system development informa information type follows. So for this, the baseline security categorization is confidentiality low, integrity moderate, and availability low. And there's also some special factors affecting integrity impact documentation. So the recommended integrity type impact level uh, may range from low to high um, 
to national security information, which is outside the scope of this guidance in, in uh, 800-60, but is covered more fully in CNSSI 1253. This is an example of the FIPS 199 worksheet that's available on cyberrecon.com. Um, basically, these first two steps, we will determine the high water mark based on the baseline information types. And in the next couple slides, we'll go over a couple information types to show how this table will work. Understand that in a normal information system, you'll have many, many more information types normally than just the two we'll use in this examples. For this example, we've selected two information types, which is the system development information type, which we described earlier. And we've also added the infrastructure maintenance information type so that we can get a well-rounded example. So the system development information type, as we talked about earlier, was a uh, impact level of low, moderate, low. And the infrastructure maintenance has a confidentiality impact level of low an integrity impact level of low, an availability impact level of low. So we take the uh, highest impact level from each of these under C, I, and A, and we will uh, determine the highest in each of those categories, uh, which will be uh, low for confidentiality, moderate for integrity, and low for availability. Of these three, we'll take the highest of those, and that will be the systems high watermark. In this example, it would be moderate. Part three of the worksheet, or step three, allows the information uh, impact levels to be modified based on the organizational input. Uh, it's good to note that these modifications would have to be approved by the authorizing official, but it gives the organization the ability to be more flexible in the de definition of the information types uh, impact levels. Uh, for example, uh, an impact level of high could be reduced to moderate or low could be reduced to high based on the types uh, of threats based on the system or information types or any number of variables uh, based on how the organization views each information type and as it's being applied to that system or even the organization as a whole. So in this example, the system development information type is being modified for an integrity impact level of low. And there's a justification that the system being developed has an extremely low impact level for integrity based on the system mission. So again, this modification would have to be approved by the authorizing official. But if the authorizing official does approve it, this would change the system's high watermark from low moderate low to low low low, or an overall high watermark of uh, low. Categorizing the information system's high watermark is an important step in developing the foundation for the security plan for the information system. It's actually the first thing that's really added to the security plan, and it actually sets the baseline for those controls that will be added and developed during the system's life cycle. This task is followed by task 1-2, information system description, where we start really building the SSP.